Hey guys, welcome back to another lesson. Today I'd like to tell you the story of the dominant chord that doesn't fit in, the black sheep of dominant chords, the 13th sharp 11 chord. I'm gonna start by playing it, and then I'll explain what I mean by not fitting in, and I'll show you how to use it nevertheless. Let me start by playing the C13 sharp 11 dominant chord, or at least one way of voicing it. So in the left hand I'm playing a C, an E, and a B flat. In the right hand I'm playing a D, an F sharp, and an A. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the C major scale, and I'm playing the first, third, the flat and seventh, the ninth, the sharp and eleventh, and the thirteenth degrees. And one easy way of remembering this is playing a C dominant 7 in the left hand without the 5th degree and a D major in the right hand. Now of course you can play a dominant 13 sharp 11 chord basically starting from any note. For example, here's a G 13 sharp 11. Here is an F13 sharp 11. So all you have to do is just transpose it across the keyboard. Now, why do I call this sort of the black sheep of dominant chords? Well, the reason is that it doesn't really function as a dominant chord. And I'll explain what I mean. Let's look at a simple progression. A G dominant 7 resolving to a C major. This is pretty much the strongest kind of resolution that you can create in diatonic Western harmony. And, you know, it's used extensively. Basically, the idea is that a dominant chord resolves naturally to either the major or the minor chord that is a perfect fourth above it. So for a G, the chord that is a perfect fourth above it is a C. So I can play... A G dominant 7 resolving to a C major, or even a C minor. And I can string these sort of progressions along. For example, something that, that maybe Beethoven would do. C dominant 7 resolving to an F major, which is a perfect fourth above it, right? Because C, go up a perfect fourth, you get an F. D dominant seven, resolving to a G. Again, G is a perfect fourth above the D. E dominant seven, resolving to an A minor. So, take an E dominant seven, go up a perfect fourth, you get an A. And so on and so on. Now, the problem with the 13th sharp 11th chord is that it doesn't really resolve to the you know, neither the major nor the minor chord that is a perfect fourth above it. So the natural thing for a dominant G7 chord would be to resolve to a C, let's say a C major. But if I play this 13th sharp 11th chord, it doesn't really resolve that nicely. Have a listen again doesn't sound like a strong resolution. You know, this chord doesn't really want to go here. This isn't because of the tensions. There are many variations on the G dominant 7th chord that resolve just fine to the C major. For example, this is a G dominant 7 with a sharp 5 and a... Sh uh, sorry, a flat 5 and a flat 9. And it resolves quite nicely to C major. So this 13th sharp 11 chord doesn't really resolve nicely, and that's kind of what sets it apart from pretty much any other variation on dominant chords that you can find. And, well, the basic idea is that it doesn't function as a dominant chord. That's basically what you would say if you were thinking in terms of 
diatonic harmony, regular kind of harmony, so to speak. So I've just spent six or seven minutes explaining why this is kind of like a sad dominant uh, chord. But it still has an important use. It does resolve to something. And its main use, at least as far as I use it, is resolving chromatically, basically to a chord that is a semitone usually below it. And I'll give you a couple of examples. So let's start with the first example. Basically, I was playing a C major 9, going to an E dominant 7, this is with a flat 9 and a flat 5, and then going to an A minor. And in between, just before the E dominant 7, I stuck this F dominant 7, 13 sharp 11 which is this. And this is just, again, a transposition of the voicing I initially showed you. So, you know, if you take a C and you start sort of climbing up, you get this voicing for the F. And this F leads quite nicely into the E dominant 7. So this is the kind of chromatic motion that these 13 sharp 11 chords really lend themselves to. Let's have another example. Let's have a D minor, or D minor 9, going to a D flat, 13 sharp 11. So something like this. So this D flat, 13 sharp 11, resolves chromatically quite nicely to the C major 9. I'll conclude with one more example. And in this case, I'll start with the C major 9 and I'll go to the G 13 sharp 11 which would chromatically move down to an F sharp 9, with a sharp 11, by the way, to an F major 9. So basically, I'm pretty much stringing along two of these chords and adding some chromatic motion in between. And it leads quite nicely. You can only do it once, so you can start with an F sharp 13 sharp 11 and resolve to the F major 9. I said I'll give three examples, but let me give one more. And in this case, I'm going to use a B flat 13 sharp 11 which will resolve chromatically a semitone down to an A minor 9. So I could do something like... Right? Maybe this would sound a little bit better uh, up an octave. So again, you have this chromatic motion. A B flat, dominant 7, or dominant 13, sharp 11, resolving down a semitone to an A minor 9. So I hope these ideas show you that despite the fact that this dominant chord doesn't fulfill its role, it's kind of the black sheep of dominant chords, it still has a, you know, a wide range of uses 
that you can put it to in your, you know, when you write your core progressions or reharmonizations or whatever. That's it. I hope you've learned something interesting and I'll see you next time.